So, well, Schoenfelder, he's the man to beat, and he's the first one who will be out of the gates. We hope in just a moment time. Other people to watch. Lionel Brun, there in sixth. He has a silver medal in this event from eight years ago. And he finished second to Schoenfelder on two occasions. Now Cameron Rals rabula another Australian. Bronze in the slalom on Monday. And he has third and fourth place finishes in World Cup events this season. And took bronze at the 2009 World Championship. He's the second man to go, so we could see the early times being the markers here. Now the top racers are all in the first 15. And it's a random draw this time around. Then for the second run, the top 15 also go in the first 15 slots, but in reverse order. So the 15th fastest from run one starts us off for run two. And the quickest from run one will be skiing down in 15th position from the starting gate in the second run. Now, I don't think that's uh, a natural colour of facial hair. But we've seen many different styles across all sports. The Norwegian curling trousers and plenty of different interesting hairstyles to keep the crowd entertained and add extra colour to these Paralympic Games. Well, the fog seems to be holding up enough for the moment. Good Schoenfelder here. Now, it's easy to lose count, but he has 18 Paralympic medals. Back on his mantelpiece at home. Although, one of them won't yet be on the mantelpiece. It'll be with him here in Whistler. The silver medal he won in Monday slalom. So, Schoenfelder skiing very nicely here. And the rest of these racers will very much expect his time to be impressive. The next one's down. Cameron Rals rabula will be starting about a minute after Schoenfelder heads out of the starting gate. So he won't know what the time is. He won't know what's happened to him. The information probably will get fed up to the rest of the races, depending on where the coaches are and if the athletes want to know or whether they just want to block it out and race their own race. But... Schoenfelder skiing very nicely here, but just managing to keep it together, almost lost it. And that could have been disastrous for the German. Well, he's got some pretty good speed. 111.80. And they like it well. It could have been even better. So Cameron Riles Rabula third in the slalom on Monday and as I mentioned just a moment ago third in this event at the world championships last year the high one resort in Korea Korea recently submitted their bid for the 2018 Winter Olympics and Paralympics. Competing against bids from Germany and France. Now Rals Rabula coming down. The crowd allowed. The time won't be good enough to beat Schoenfelder. But he's certainly in touch. Next up, Marcus Sacher of Austria. Now he was 20th in the slalom two days ago. But we just see a recording of his start and uh, well and there we 
we see a replay? Well, unfortunate there for Salka. Hard to know if he was affected by the... What well, does seem to be pretty poor... Visibility. Or whether he just made a little mistake at the top of our picture on the replay there. So... They'll know that their man isn't coming down, but they'll be cheering for him anyway. Just 18 years old, Salka. And depending on the nature of his fall, the course officials might just be repairing the damage done to the course. And the skis did break off. Well, that's Cameron Ralzabula. The 26-year-old we saw joking with his teammate Mitchell Gawley ahead of the race. And these team officials and coaches anxiously awaiting their men down the slopes. So just a brief delay while... I imagine we're getting a few minor repairs done. South African fans in the, in the crowd. And they do have one representative, Bruce Warner. The only South African in these entire Paralympic Games. And we are back with Thomas Furl. The silver medalist from four years ago. Seventh in the slalom. Now 23 years of age. And he's hovered around the podium in World Cup races this season. But hasn't gone any closer than fourth. He also tied Romain Riboud for fourth place at the World Championship last year. Well, we've heard several athletes so far at these games talk about how bad that fourth position is. Marie Bachet of France, who we saw in the women's division, saying it was just horrible. Fell skiing the top section pretty nicely though. And just fractionally behind Schoenfeld at this stage. So let's see if he can keep this up on the bottom section. Martin Braxenthaler. Another German legend in Paralympic skiing. Got two fourth places in the World Championships in Korea last year and said he never ever wanted to feel that way again. Well, just going a bit wide here, Furl. It's the tricky section. Down the lower reaches of this course. And it is steeper than it looks on your screens. As Furl goes into third place. Well, I lost some time down on the bottom. But skied very nicely down at the top. Hubert Mandel of Austria didn't complete his first run in the slalom two days ago and he'll hope to use that experience to the good here he likes cycling and motorcycles and he's been racing for a number of years made his debut back in 1991 as a 16 year old as Hubert Mandel comes down to register what's going to be a pretty good time and good enough for second so putting the pressure on Schoenfelder the favourite who still leads now here's another man who could challenge Lionel Brunt of France, sixth in the slalom, but made his Paralympic debut back in 1992 when he picked up gold in this event. So he's got as much experience as Schoenfelder, not quite as decorated, 
but he does have eight Paralympic medals. And as I said earlier, he's got two second place finishes. Runner up to Schoenfelder on two occasions on the World Cup circuit this season. So, Lionel Brunt coming down. And he is into fourth position. So, still within two seconds. And Schoenfelder will know that he can't afford to ease up on his second run. Vassal Gauthier Manuel. And look at that. An excellent start. Five hundredths of a second up. But Schoenfelder was pretty strong down the middle and bottom sections. So let's see if Gauthier Manuel can maintain this fine start. 23 year old from Champagnol finished fifth in the slalom. And as you can see, he's dropped time compared with Schoenfelder. He'll do everything he can if he can be clean down these last few gates. 45 of them in all. And he's skiing a very nice, tight line. Brushing each one with his shoulder. Perfect racing line. And that is a very good run indeed for Vincent Gauthier Manuel. Second place. And he will very much be in contention. Mitchell Gawley now. The second Australian down the mountain. Now, he may have had a chance to speak to Cameron after his run, just to tell him how conditions are. So he might have a slight advantage where the course is running and playing and which gates to watch for. Gawley nearly two and a half seconds down at the moment. Looks to have some pretty good speed, but line not quite as good as Gautier Manuel, but different styles and different lines do favour different techniques, so not necessarily one right way to go down the hill. Gawley into seventh. Well, here's the fourth place finisher in a number of events, both this season and in the World Championships last year. Romain Raboud of France. Disappointing 16th for him in the slalom two days ago. You can hear the icy turns. Conditions on the hill much better than they would have been yesterday when we had constant rain sometimes bucketing down well down goes Rubuz and let's hope he's okay but I'm sure he's very disappointed well let's see if this Frenchman can do any better Cedric Amarfois Boisat he was one place better than Raboud in the slalom on Monday. 15th he finished. And nearly three seconds down on the German leader's time at the moment. Amrafra Boisat is in the LW4 category. The skiers with a below the knee amputation but using a prosthetic limb and the two skis and the two poles as you can see there now if you are just tuning in to watch coverage of our alpine events here at the paralympics for the first time the factoring system does mean that the skiers with different disabilities are averaged out and they're given a different time boost and it's all based on historical performance and data and so you'll see Toby Kane here on the one ski, several others on the two. But they all do compete.
for the one set of medals. In the past that wasn't the case and there were many more subcategories. But it is more competitive this way and I think the athletes appreciate that as much as sometimes there can be frustrations in trying to get a comparison between skiers on one ski and on two and with different abilities and levels of mobility but here comes Kane rolled on by the crowd and into seventh place <laughs> following Kane down the hill is Michael Brugger of Switzerland certainly someone who could be in with a shout after the final shakedown two seconds back and finished in 13th place now he's also using a prosthetic limb and skiing pretty nicely indeed it is easy to forget of course the speeds that these races are coming down the hill that some of them may be using prosthetic limbs far far quicker than the vast majority of able-bodied skiers and very much elite racers and athletes in their own right Robert Moisberger of Austria fourth in the slalom on Monday and let's see how he measures up against Schoenfelder's time well driving through this final section into fourth Here is Hiraku Misawa, who didn't get down his first run two days ago, but look at that. He's roaring down. 1700 up. But it was this section here where Schoenfelder really picked up some time. And Misawa can't afford to relax. Let's see if he's managed to keep that momentum going. Lightning quick out of the starting gate and he goes wide there. And again, that is where Schoenfelder's run is really having a big effect. Lost more than a second over that middle section. Didn't make any major mistakes. Just slightly struggling with the line here. Needs to really concentrate. a few issues with balance and unfortunately for Misawa after a fantastic start drops down to 10th place 10th place was where Alexander Aliabiev finished in the slalom few seconds back let's see how he does so the Russian Aliyabiev comes down to complete the last few gates here and goes into 13th place bit of a shake of the head as Martin France of Slovakia starts to a thunderous reception up there we've seen some very impressive Slovakian performances so far here at Whistler in these Paralympic Games none more so than Jakob Krakow the 
The youngster very much leading the way for his team. And there is an athlete's village up in Whistler, so all these athletes will be staying together, comparing notes, even though they might be in different categories, whether it's visually compared. Visually impaired, standing or sitting. As France comes down to complete his first of two runs. And there you go, into 12th place for Martin France. Bradley Washburn of the United States. And Brad was ninth in the first event that we've seen so far here at Whistler. The slalom two days ago. And just a little bit out of control coming over that hill. But does seem to be charging. Does have a very aggressive style. And very distinctive helmet. Now the time's not going to be the best. But trying to make up as much time as he can down the bottom and into 15th position. Another Japanese racer, Kakuta Koike, 18th in the slalom. And Koike has a functional disability of his left arm which is why he's just using the one pole and unfortunately for him sliding out there well here's a replay just couldn't pull it round and you see the blue die in the snow spraying through as he just smashes into that other gate Well, next up will be another Japanese racer, Shinji Inoue. And here he comes, appearing out of the mist. Two and a half seconds down, he was 29th in the slalom. 43 years old, now living in Ueda. Well, the veteran has appeared in previous Paralympic Games. He had three top ten finishes eight years ago in Salt Lake. And another top ten finish here in Whistler would be fantastic for him. It's probably not going to be today, but he is in the downhill and the Super G, so... We'll see how he does as the week progresses. Manfred Auer of Austria. Pulled out of the slalom. So this is his first taste of Paralympic action this time around. But these are his third games in total. But his best results definitely in the downhill. Fifth and sixth in 2006 and 2002. So he'll be looking forward to that one. But good to get some racing under his belt. If he can just keep it together here. And as they come over that final rise into the last pitch down to the finish. We have seen a number of races. Have a bit of trouble, but pretty good there for our. Now Morgan Perrin. Another one who pulled out of the slalom, so this, his first Paralympic run. And no doubt had a few nerves before the start. But 
But he should be able to draw some confidence in the fact that he is based here in Whistler. So there won't be a racer in this category who knows the hill better than Morgan. And just losing a bit of speed, using his poles there to try and propel him forward. He's having some difficulties here. Twenty-three-year-old holds it together just about. Now Marty Mabry disqualified in his first run in the slalom. And Marty is due to get married when he returns home. Marty, more of a downhill specialist, had a silver and a gold medal in Aspen earlier this month in the run-up to this event. So let's see how he does here in the giant slalom. Well, a similar result to the slalom. So going through the gate, it seemed. And you have to do, you have to go between the two gates well Matt Hallett choosing not to start and that's Mika Yozzi who crashed straight through that well he seems okay fortunately back on his feet but he was going pretty quickly so we won't see the speeds of course that these athletes will get in the downhill event and here's a replay. Well, that was pretty nasty. So, let's hope Mika's okay. Now, as I said, we won't be getting the speeds today that we hope to see tomorrow and I say hope because the weather can be unpredictable but it is the downhill six gold medals up for grabs in the men's and the women's side all the categories in just the one day and of course just the one run so not like in the slalom and giant slalom where it's a combination of the two but we'll have the visually impaired sitting and standing women's followed by the same three events for the men Jeff Dixon of Canada getting his first taste of action at these Paralympic Games Jeff born and still based in Sudbury Urging himself on there. The course does, of course, cut up slightly the more these races go down. Not as much as we saw yesterday in the sitting division, of course, with the rigs that the races are in in that division. It's just that much more weight as they bounce around the corners and drive back down into the course cutting up the corners but certainly it'll be harder for these races towards the end of the field but they are seeded in groups so if you've performed well on the World Cup circuit you'll already have been in the top 15 or so races and had a chance to experience the best course conditions Kevin Vermeister, 21 in the slalom two years ago. Now 
living in Aachen in Germany. And competed at the World Cup event here last year last year in in this giant slalom division. It was 18th, but he's not going to be 18th in this. Unfortunately for Kevin, he'll be out. And just trying to push it down the last few gates and unfortunately pushing it a little bit too much. Now Stanislav Loska of the Czech Republic. Fourteenth in the slalom and definitely one of those races. He'll be trying to force his way into the top fifteen. here in this event well we can see Gert Schoenfelders well just bouncing around the corners but coming down successfully to finish his run and Stanislav Loska into 13th position Well, welcome to our live viewers for the second half of this giant slalom standing division. We still have a number of races down, but many of the quicker ones have already headed down there, of course, in the first 15. And you can see the time there to beat Gerd Schoenfelder, the veteran of many Paralympic Games and several Paralympic medals looking for another one here today and no one's come within more than a second of his time so so we see Zlatko Pejak who crashed out of his second round the slalom two days ago if you're joining us for this you will be able to see the second run the all-important second run for both the women's and the men's at, we think, probably around 3 o'clock Pacific time, but we are going to stick with the completion of the biathlon events. And as soon as that's done, we will show you the Alpine event. So it will be fractionally delayed. But we'll get it to you as soon as we possibly can. And if you're a fan of alpine skiing, or even if you're not, definitely worth tuning in tomorrow for the downhill event. The marquee event, six medals up for grabs. Both the men's and the women's, all three categories in each. Visually impaired sitting and this, the standing division. And George Sansonesis comes down for the US. he's well back but completes his first run he wasn't able to do so in the slalom so he'll be feeling better after that now we saw Vincent Gauthier Manuel of France earlier in a pretty respectable time and he'll definitely be challenging come the second run here is his team teammate Laurent Cole Fouti. 35th in the slalom two days ago. Laurent is a carpenter when he's not on the slopes. Like spending time hunting and walking in the forests. So, Col Fouti in 21st position at the moment. And these races coming down at one minute intervals. So we just pop up to see a very slightly delayed recording of Martin Falk's start. And then here we are now live with him for the second half of his run. The Austrian just entered for the two technical events, the slalom and the giant slalom. A 
and he was 12th in the slalom so he'll hope to have a similar or better result here pretty big fields in the standing divisions we have pretty close to 50 competitors if they all choose to start in the events we've seen so far so very deep competitive fields go, 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 go. and here's an Italian Hans-Jörg Lanschner now there was another Italian who was down for these technical events Luca Carrara but unfortunately he's been unable to race he had bone cancer from a young age which forced his right leg to be amputated earlier in his life but he broke his left leg the day before the game started now he has stayed here to support his teammates but our thoughts are very much with Luca and we wish him a speedy recovery desperately disappointing for him after the years of training and preparation that all these athletes put in as Lanchner just manages to hold it together there Now, Kirk Schoenstein. Just 16. For another couple of days when he turns 17. Living in Spruce Grove, Alberta. Now he was 25th in the slalom two days ago. Skiing pretty nicely here. He has... He is some distance behind, of course, but he'll be getting valuable experience. If he can just keep it together, well, he can. That will cost him time. Just desperately trying to get into the tuck for these final few gates. 24th for Kirk. But you would think he'd be much more of a threat in Sochi in four years' time. Szczesny from Poland. Now, this is his first Paralympic Games because, well, I mentioned Luca Carrara and his broken leg. The same thing happened to this man four years ago. A broken leg while training for the slalom event just prior to the 2006 Paralympic Winter Games in Turin. So he will know exactly how Luca Carrara feels as he watches from wherever he is, supporting his Italian teammates. Nice that he did decide to stay here in Whistler to support the rest of his team. Well, Szczesny, 26th position at the moment. Now Martin Chapka. Very deep team of Slovakian athletes here at these Paralympic Games. 19th in the slalom and based in Vail, Colorado. So for those of you just joining us here, this is the standing division. There are several different subcategories ranging from LW1 all the way up to LW9 and there are further subdivisions within those categories so the complicated as always here in Paralympic skiing as we see John Whitney of the US Well, the complicated factoring system does take into account a variety of different factors. For those of you unfamiliar with Paralympic Alpine, to enable 
people on one ski, two skis with no poles or one or two poles all to race in the same category and it's based on historical data. Now of course one of the problems is that there's only so much data they have the sample size is reasonably small but much bigger on the men's side than it is for the women's and so some people not happy with the way the system is but generally agreed that it's the fairest way to do it but you won't see the raw times from start to finish of these athletes you just see the factor time so that's all you need to worry about the time on your screens and the placings when we go through the checkpoints that is that has the factor the complicated algorithm already taken into effect so don't worry too much about the the factoring system but that is why you'll see skiers going at different speeds but then coming out with very similar times so Michal Kloss of Poland 33 in the slalom and entered for these two technical events the slalom the most technical of the five alpine disciplines followed by the giant slalom and then at the other end of the scale the downhill and that will be tomorrow Ian Jansing here of the United States and the US always very strong in alpine skiing at these Paralympic Games we joined yesterday by Chris Waddell in the commentary booth which was as always a great pleasure now for those of you who don't know Chris he was just inducted into the Paralympic Hall of Fame one of just 10 athletes and coaches in total ever to have that honor and winner of 13 Winter Paralympic medals Chris always busy with various projects scaled Mount Kilimanjaro last year hoping to do the Great Wall Marathon in China that's another one on his list and just an incredible incredible former athlete and now Paralympic ambassador well disappointment there for Christian Lantala he crashes out so it enables us to see a little bit more of this run and you will see because of the intervals that these athletes are sent down Bruce Warner the sole representative from South Africa here at these Paralympic Games his father David represented his province in field hockey and his grandfather Plum also played at the provincial level for field hockey cricket and rugby made his debut at the 1998 Paralympic Winter Games in Nagano Japan As I was saying a moment ago, you do sometimes, if you see a crash, well, we do have to have a little moment when the course is cleared. And on unfortunate, rare occasions, if someone crashes badly towards the end, you see the clock already at 1.25. Now, one minute into Warner's run, the next athlete will be sent down from the starting gate. And if the previous athlete does crash well then in this case it would be Ralph Green of the United States he would be stopped by a course official and sent back up to rerun his course later which 
can be very hard indeed depending on how far down the course he is but conditions could be very different now Ralph Green on just the one ski as you can see and an absolute tree trunk of a right leg very very powerful man and Ralph was shot as a 16 year old in his native Brooklyn he does a lot of talking at youth centres about the dangers of street violence Australia's Nick Watts. Now he broke his leg in training in New Zealand back in September. And he's had a metal rod inserted into his right leg here. Impressive that he's even able to line up. He said after the slalom, it was very, very, very sore, as you can imagine. So, good enough to start, but certainly won't be at 100%, having missed those critical months in the build-up. And it'll be here where his leg is really beginning to burn. Just going slightly wide on some of these gates, and understandably so. Well, wasn't able to finish his second run in the slalom, but he'll be back for a second run in the giant slalom. Who's that? Who's that? Well, I can tell you the shout of who is that? It's Balas Kolozar of Hungary. Crashed out in his first run. In the slalom. At least it sounded like who is that? It could have been Hungarian. So Gerd Schoenfelder of Germany was the first out of the starting gate. The first of the 50 competitors entered in this event and he has posted the quickest time we've seen so far today. And with just a handful of athletes left, it would be extremely surprising to see anyone go quicker. They are, of course, ranked on their World Cup points, their performances throughout the season. So the top 15 go in a random order in the first 15 positions when the course is at its best. And lovely to see a bit of sun. We saw pretty heavy fog earlier today, but it wasn't appearing to affect the races. Yevgen Kravitz of Ukraine comes down well he's well back because the race is coming at this stage in the starting order don't have the number of points that the top races do and in the second run which we'll see this afternoon and hope to bring you well Kravitz can continue if he back on his feet as he is so we hope to bring you the second run at about three o'clock we're estimating as soon as the biathlon finishes here on Paralympic Sport TV so we will be slightly delayed but we'll bring it to you as soon as we possibly can to see the women's first of all and then the men's in the standing division well a shake of the head he nearly got down there without mishap Mario Dadic of Croatia now and He's had his problems in the build-up to these games. Suffered a dislocated shoulder in a crash in training. So, skiing pretty cautiously down here, and that could be why. Likes playing poker and tennis. Away from the hills, of course. And came 37th. in the slalom two days ago well 36th after this first run and whether that's his shoulder or some other parts of his body he did look to be in a little bit of pain there 
Papavasile of Greece. Thirty years old, living in Athens. He's a military officer and Navy Academy graduate. And likes swimming, diving, scuba diving and shooting. Pretty new to Paralympic skiing. Made his debut just last year in the European Cup in Austria. And we'll just try and get back on track here. And he'll be getting some of his experience under his belt and may hope to be back in Sochi in Russia in four years' time. And he'll hope to improve on the 40th position he got in the slalom two days ago. And we'll see if he can beat that in the giant slalom with his run this afternoon. So just a handful more athletes now, these final few. They won't be competing for the medals, but they'll be doing everything they can to get as high a position as possible. Now Memich from Bosnia and Herzegovina had his left leg amputated after suffering injuries in a landmine explosion so his left leg has prosthetic limb there and just depending on the different injury or condition that these Athletes have, some choosing to use prosthetic limbs, some choosing not to. And it's really just down to personal preference as they adapt as best they can. Jorge Miguelez of Chile. Well, more misfortune for him. He uh, wasn't able to make it down his first run in the slalom. He's just entered in these two events missed the eighth gate looks to have stayed on track here though all these results that we have are provisional for the moment and occasionally do see disqualifications as the officials go back and look at the video and maybe catch something they missed first time around So Avenician, 36 in the slalom. The Armenian made his Paralympic debut in 1998 with a seventh place finish in the giant slalom. And unfortunately for him, couldn't quite keep it together. Dropped down but through the gate and he won't have the option to continue. If you do go wide of a gate, you can come back as long as you haven't crashed out or gone through the next one. And a rare representative at these Winter Paralympics from Iran, Sadegh Kalhor, carried the flag last week at the opening ceremony and skiing pretty well here. Despite his lowly starting position, certainly quicker than the last few competitors that we've had. But, well, just carrying a little bit too much speed around that corner. And that's a shame because he was skiing pretty nicely. So, 34th. in the slalom but unfortunately that's going to be as good as it gets for Sadek here at these Paralympic Games so confirmation of the first run and good Schoenfelder as we expected the man to beat in this evening in this afternoon second run Vincent Gauthier Manuel of France 
just over a second behind and then two Austrians very very close within two hundredths of a second within each other and they'll hope to both be on the podium so the second run for the men's and the women's coming up at about one o'clock and we will hope to show you that here on Paralympic Sport TV at about 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time but do tune in to catch our biathlon before that and of course if the biathlon does finish early at all earlier than we expect it might we will get the medal runs the all-important second runs and you can see the number of crashes there conditions pretty good today but a number of racers won't be lining up for that second run but do do stay across our coverage if